My question is, if my preference is to be with a certain individual in a relationship, do I disregard this particular person and only focus on what type of relationship I want, or can I imagine a relationship specifically with this person? If I do, am I disrespecting their free will? Um, no. If you wish, you can imagine all you want that you're in a relationship with a person that would not impose upon their free will. Um, so just to have that answered, no. Um, is it advisable to focus on a specific person? Depends, depends on the scenario. This is a little tricky to comment on universally. Um, in my experience, sometimes either one has been the case. What I can always recommend universally, generally speaking, is that you extract the essence from what that person represents to you, right? So you meet this person and you're head over heels and you're so in love and it's so awesome. But why? Why are you head over heels? Why are you in love with that person? What do they represent about you vibrationally that you long to experience? That's always a safe bet, no matter what. And I'm not saying you cannot specifically then unleash your powers and demand that, you know, imagine nationwide that you end up in a relationship with that specific person, you can do that and it can work unless it's absolutely not relevant for you and the lessons you want to learn from a higher self point of view are not at all to be learned in that experience. In fact, they may be learned through not getting what you desire and therefore that will empower you if you use it wisely, if you use it from appreciation and from knowing that ultimately you are the chooser and creator of your reality. So yet you can try it out and you'll, f you'll see how much resistance there is when you do that. If there's a lot of resistance to imagining that specific person and it doesn't feel good, you're just like polluting your energy field and you're polluting your reality. If it feels really amazing, why not? Use that as a symbol, imagine that. Let that be, let that free up your state of being, increase your frequency, allow that symbol, use that symbol, don't just allow the symbol to do something for you, but you use that symbol consciously, intentionally, to raise your frequency, to master the game of vibrations so that you can be in the state of what they represent for you, whether or not they actually come your way, physically speaking. Now, if you extract the essence from what they represent for you, then it's even very likely that something else will show up that is cutting edge at that stage, that's next level at that point. Relationships are not necessarily meant to last very long, necessarily. I know that's a that's a very present idea in our society, but it's not, it's not very grounded in vibrational understanding. Um, I'm not saying it can't, I'm not saying that sometimes it's not relevant for two people to spend a lifetime together. Obviously it is, but I think that over, overall we're idolizing this idea of an other person fulfilling us or representing not seeing that it's a representation and really feeling like they own our happiness, they own our joy, it's inside of them. If you reach that stage of um, misperceiving your happiness, misplacing your happiness, then it's very helpful to re-own your happiness, to realize that that's not the case. If you don't do that consciously, your higher self will do it for you and you, you will get separated somehow so that you can realize that it's not in that other person. Makes sense, right? It's very logical. <laughs> So if you actually want to be with that person, be that person. Does that make sense? Be what they represent. The vibration that they represent to you, be that person in your own energy field, and then you'll be a match with that person or whatever is even better for you that you can now have access to because you stepped up your game, because you integrated and learned from that essence that they represented, right? Cool. So don't be too attached, it's okay. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Dry your eyes, mate. Here's the cause of most problems in relationships. Ownership, possession, objectification. As soon as we reduce in our minds, in our state of consciousness, in our observation, the other entity, the one who we believe we're in relationship to, as soon as we reduce their freedom, their agency, their, the fact that they are an inseparable expression of the one infinite creation, once we stop seeing the other entity as a free creator, we will automatically think of them, whether we want to or not, as an object in our game, in our plan, in our strategy to get 
domination over others to get security, safety, comfort, pleasure, have our needs met and all that. So the best way to restore this is to be really radical with yourself and say, I'm causing so much suffering in my relationship and my relationship is causing me so much suffering. The only wise thing to do is to grow up. And growing up means that I have to get really, really real with myself and why I'm in this relationship and how I treat in my mind, not even just physically, that's after, not even just verbally, that's after, how I treat this person in my mind. And if I treat them, if I mistreat them in my mind, if I see them as an object in my game, even a little bit, if I think they owe me anything, if I think that they are responsible for my well-being to whatever extent, whatever extent, even if it's just a little bit, I am abusing the free creator that's over there by reducing them to an object in my game. That's not love. It's got nothing to do with love. Relationships are a man-made fabrication. There's no evidence. There's no proof in the actual isness of existence that a relationship is an actual thing. Just like the whole universe is quiet, except in our minds. A tree doesn't call itself a tree. Those stones don't call themselves stones. A body doesn't call itself the body. The universe, if you learn to listen without your mind, is completely quiet. A relationship is a label, it's a definition that comes with a host of assumptions and ideas that are all rooted in human insecurity. Love means, to love another means to work on your insecurities to the point where you no longer need them for your well-being and you only wish them well. And so you know that your integrity and your love is restored once you can look at that entity and see them as the creator, see them as the one infinite creator, see them as this free expression of the one infinite creator, not in any way, shape or form to whatever extent as a, your object, no possession, no objectification, that's abuse that starts in the mind and then that will bleed into your relationship. All difficulties in relationships are abuse. They are a result of mental abuse first and foremost. It's a harmful way to see another entity, it's to see them as an object that owes you something. You're not entitled to anything from anyone. So unconditional love, my friends, it's a radical step. But once you see how fucked up your relationships are without it, you will grow up. You will make that tough choice to prefer unconditional love over your selfish needs and desires. And then when your purity, your integrity towards your soul, towards God, towards the creator within, towards other selves, seeing them as the creator has been restored, you will feel your purity return. And this purity now becomes the fountain of your well-being, the fountain of your energy, the fountain of your creative energy, the fountain of your happiness, the fountain of your generosity. Now you will feel good about yourself in a really deep, profound, holistic way, peaceful and yet excited, loving 